adoption so we'll first define what is adoption and next we'll go for what is the process of adoption and after that we'll go who does the adoption and how they do it and then we'll see about the organizations and uh, other entities which are involved in the process of adoption and then we'll see what does the government what does the government do and then we'll see what are the challenges faced by those organizations so fundamentally adoption it's a very well known word what we do here is prospective parents who want to become parents will adopt a child the issue is currently there is a huge trend of adoptions that are taking place previously adoption was considered to be a taboo it was there right from in historical sense a lot of adoptions have taken place but uh, not very welcomed but now the trend has changed maybe because the sensitivity of the public has increased especially towards girl child and uh, i should say the financial capacity of the public has also increased due to heavy increase in job prospects and better standard of living of lot of people so this adoption process has increased a lot especially in the urban lot because uh, the mentalities have changed financially they are more stable so instead of having two kids of their own there is a trend of having one kid of their own and one kid getting being adopted uh especially there is a preference to girl girl child uh because usually in our country the girl child is considered to be goddess lakshmi and uh, goddess saraswati so it's a beautiful thing so i think this trend is a very beautiful thing which is happening and it should be more but there are some advantages as well as i don't say disadvantages there are some flaws in the process which we will start discussing today so let's start with the definition of what do you mean by adoption in legal ways so for all please adoption it means a legal process that allows someone to become the parent of a child even though the parent of the child are not related by blood so it is not necessary that they are not related by blood therefore so of course if they are related by blood uh here the essence is they might not be the biological parents for example there are instances especially in societies where the mama adopts the son or the daughter of the sister especially if they don't have kids sometimes the elder brother and the elder elder brother of a particular person adopts because they don't have kids so or if the younger one has two three kids one of the kids get adopted by the elder one or the younger one it's like that so depending upon the situation though they are related or not related by blood if they are legally adopting a person then that's called adoption it is not a very great definition uh, all of you know it so but in every other way the adoptive parents are the child's parents so those who adopt will automatically become their parents so it's a known thing but to get the adoption done the most important thing is what are the laws which are involved in this so please remember this this is the star mark point for prelims also you might get a question but chances are very less just in case if it is useful it is very nice so hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 and that is for hindus jains sikhs and as well as buddhists while the juvenile justice care and protection of children act 2015 based on these acts the concept of adoption can be followed in our country so since this concept of adoption is being included through an act automatically this becomes statutory based out of an act they create a law therefore automatically it becomes a statutory act so you will require a statutory body to do that so how do you do it i hope all of you get this point very clearly
sorry, small thing. Yeah. Hmm? Kadu, can you come down? In the country, the red light off on or <clears throat> so, since it is done through an act, you have to understand that it becomes a statutory law. Therefore, since it is a statutory law, automatically what happens? You need a statutory body to do it. So, who, how and why we will discuss. So, moving on. So, who does this work is, please look at these names. We will see the process later. But first, how it is done? You will have a database. And this database will be with these people. Child Adoption Resource Information and Guidance System. They are called Carings. This Carings fundamentally has the prospective parents who want to do adoption. So I will write them as Prospective Adoptive Parents, PAPs. So this system will have those parents who want to become, those guys who want to become parents. So all the people who want to become or who want to take adoption, that list of parents will be with them. So what happens is, if you want to, if for example I am there, I want to adopt a child. So I will have to first register myself with Carings, step 1. So we will go back here and just look at the names first. Then you have specialized adoption agency. What this we will do, we will discuss. And then what happens with CARA, I will tell you. So let's get back to the first slide once. So this is the process. First, as me, for example, it's me. I want to become a prospective adoptive parent. I want to adopt. So first, what should I do? I should register with Carings. I should register with Carings. Then from Carings, the information will go to this. This is called Specialized Adoptive Agency. What these guys will do is, please try to understand, these fellows or this organization is the first point of contact with the parents. There is a huge function of these people that is very important. Now for example, if I am here, what they will do is, they will meet me first or I will have to go and meet them. Any of these two things will happen. Then what they will do is, they will come to my home. They will do full research about me. How are my home surroundings? How did I grow? What is my educational qualification? What is the work that I am doing? Am I a good person, bad person? Do I have any convictions before? or yeah, is my record very clean, all that stuff and research will be done by this agency, this specialized agency. This is the first point of contact for the adoption process after registration. So they will come, they will do thorough research about me and then they will certify whether I am fit or unfit for adoption, unfit parent. This agency will decide whether I am a fit parent or an unfit parent for adoption. Now once they deem me to be fit for, okay, this parent might be a good parent. So what they will do is, they will introduce me to the child. And of course, I have a choice of selecting the child according to what I feel. And then what I will do is, from here, please try to understand, for the first phase before adoption, Everything is under the control of SAA. So after that what happens is, this agency will come into picture. Kara, this is the most important part. So as I said, please look here, what is Kara? So, tell you what is Kara, just look here. This is CARA, Central Adoption Resource Authority. So this is the most important point. 
So this is a centralized agency where the adoption processes and all these things take place. That is a resource. This is the authority to certify and say, okay, now you can take the child and live happily forever. Only this organization can do that. So what these guys do is, most important point is, once it reaches Kara, what they do is, after the child comes to my home, for the next two years, these guys will keep following me up. They'll come, they'll regularly visit. The system is already there in European countries a lot, especially in the US and all, and some other European countries. It's been followed. So it is not a new thing. It's a very old thing only, but the process in India has to accelerate a lot. So, but the whole function is being done by CARA currently. So for the next two years, plus two years, these guys are going to follow me up. See how am I taking care of the child? Is the nutrition levels correct? Is the weight correct? And if there are any atrocities on the child, am I really being a good parent? or not, all these things will be done by this agency. So what happens is for the next two years, these guys do the follow-up. Once after two years, they come to a conclusion, okay, this guy is good, this guy's parent is, as a parent is fantastic. Then they will leave the child to me and I can take care of my child for the rest of my life without any hinges. So that is the process in which it happens. So first, caring spare registration, uske baad, SA will do a thorough research on me as on as a parent, prospective parent. Certify me. Once the certification goes, it goes to Kara. Kara will follow up me, follow me up for the next two years, and then final certification comes, and then say, okay, now you can adopt the child. So, but one more important thing is, once SAA comes to this, that I want to adopt a child, they will approach the court and file a petition with the court saying that okay, this guy wants to get adopted to this child. So therefore, SA is the SA is the major task is for SA. The final task is for CARA. So this is how the process of adoption is supposed to happen and that is how it should happen. So there are regulating bodies. They see whether the adoption process is good or bad or how it has to be done. So why am I talking about this topic today is because recently Supreme Court has given a decision on Kara's work and all these things. The adoption process is very, very slow in India. Therefore, Supreme Court wanted to accelerate this adoption process because adoption is a beautiful thing. It has to be done. And there are so many children who do not have parents, who do not have someone to take care. And with so much increasing tendencies of people, sensitivities, and huge increase in the financial capabilities, I don't think it is a problem for the new gen parents to adopt kids. So giving a child a beautiful life is something which does not have words to express. It's a very beautiful thing. And I think the culture should increase a lot. So coming back to the point with respect to UPSC. So this I cleared, the next one. Please remember, child adoption, this is carings. It is maintained by CARA. Parents register themselves on carings. And then SAA, Specialized Adoption Agencies, that's the first point of the government contact for a child. Then CARA conducts two years ke baad, and here comes child welfare, welfare committees. They play a vital role to maintain whether these fellows are doing the work properly or not. So when these organizations are doing work properly or not, will be taken care by child welfare committees. So, that is it. And moving on, who can become a prospective parent? Anyone goes and says, I want to become a parent, they will say, Are chalo. That's not going to happen. There is a particular process. And who among them? So, this is prospective adoptive parent, I said. The most important thing is that parent should be physically, mentally and financially be very, very stable. That is very important because if they are unstable, along with them, the kid also will suffer. Already that kid is suffering. Now he'll suffer more with these people. So they want to avoid that. That stability is very important. Next important thing, very important. You are not supposed to be convicted for any reason or you shouldn't have any cases on you. Your record should be absolutely clean. Then only you will be allowed for adoption. So why do they do that? Because let's say I'm a thief. I go, I adopt a child. I'll make the adopted child also another thief. I don't want such criminals in my society. Therefore, this is a very important thing. 
no convictions nothing clean record next now the adoption can happen for both married as well as unmarried people that's a very beautiful thing because it is not necessary to have a child uh you need to be unmarried you have to be married aisa kuch nahi hai you can always be unmarried and still take care of a child so if you are married then the consent of both the parents is very much required both the parents should accept then only you can take the child into your family even if one parent says no i don't want adoption that means that you cannot take take adoption that is very important so because once the why this very important is the father is okay mother is not okay that's a problem mother is okay father is not okay that's another problem only if both of them are okay then only the adoption process will start that is the best thing because of course if both of them say no there is no concept of adoption only so that is a point now for single females those who are unmarried but single yes both male as well as female child can be adopted by these single females because end of the day the female is the mother from the mother side usually there are no problems any child they take care of them very nicely therefore superb no problem but for a single male you cannot this is very important you cannot adopt a girl child if you are a single male unmarried you have no notion of marriage you cannot take a girl child directly through adoption why because though the heart of lot of men are men is good there are some people who have been doing lot of atrocities on children every day in the newspaper there is some atrocity on a child irrespective of what age they are from 2 months child to whatever age man the kind of atrocities sexual physical the atrocities are very bad so to make sure such kind of atrocities don't happen on an already orphaned child or a destitute child they made sure that single man cannot take a girl child so this is a very very important point so it's it's a right thing to do actually so as long as the atrocities continue like that i think this there will not be any change there should not be any change also next so why are we discussing this because the supreme court has expressed concern over the delay in the system of adoption in india so who does that as i told you this this is the authority and it's a statutory body under this act so because it is a news today i am discussing about this very recent i think uh, 20th or 21st or 19th somewhere this news has come out so therefore it is very important next what so what is cara what are its functions very simple to oversee the child adoption process for both indians as well as non resident indians both for both of them finally your contact point is cara only mandate what is their function they monitor as well as they regulate and the best part is they do inter intra as well as interstate adoptions all of them together will be taken by by these people and this is important for prelims it's a signatory of a convention and this comes under ministry of women and child development and please remember india is a signatory of this so they have ratified this the year 1993 the convention happened 2003 india signed this hay convention so whatever adoption process is going to take place that will be at a world as well as international level so the regulations and all these things will be based on the conventions uh conventions rules and norms and all these things so so this comes under the ministry of women and child development therefore that is very important so prelims ke liye i think this is very important and the mandate what do they do they might ask they might ask a question based on indians non resident indians is it true or not that is a point so one prelims question might pop up because supreme court came into picture important because supreme court sc judgment aaya hai therefore there is a chance of asking one or two questions or they can ask you a mains from mains perspective they can ask you a question or adoption where you are supposed to mention all these things so that's very important uske baad so what are the functions of cara they take care of adoptions and please remember they do international inter countries adoption process will take place intra within the country from region to region and interstate from one state to a state adoption process how it takes place so what has recently happened is the government has decentralized this and given more auto autonomy to the states 
or the magistrates of that particular states to look into this process because it is becoming very difficult for the central agency to look into all these adoption process and uh, there is also a recent trend of adoption being a business so they are also trying to cut that down very much uh, you must have seen in a lot of movies where a very rich fellow will be there and uh, somewhere they want adoptions what they do is they do some kind of medical things with the parents and all these things and get them destitute and then some kind of things happen so that's a different ball game and a different story altogether but let's concentrate and fix only to this part for for now so what does it do it regulates bodies like see these are the agencies which you have to remember so cara takes care of all these small small bodies state adoption resource agency sara specialized adoption agency we spoke about this authorized foreign adoption agency foreign bodies the child welfare committees of course and district child protective units these are the units which you have to take care so all of these will be under the i view or the eagles view of cara cara will look into all these people like this okay you are doing you are doing well like that so please remember this and whenever there is an opportunity to write about it please mention all these things useful for your mains next so why is because another news is the eligibility has been expanded for people in live in relationships so that is the best part so therefore it is more important now and decentralization as i told you the it has been decentralized for magistrates to issue adoption orders and inspect child care institutions so decentralization it was a nodal agency center tha now it is going to take into states and the regular magistrates so end of the day what is more important what are the challenges with cara the process of de- there is a huge delay in the process because the paperwork is too much so when the paperwork is too much it becomes very easy very difficult for parents who want to get adoption faster so when your process is you know too much the essence of adoption is lost people who want that that feeling of getting a child into the family they wait for a long time and because of this process being very very slow and uh, not so you know not so techy savvy what happens is lose they lose interest and finally they'll give up so because of that process there is a decline in the level of adoption because of this delay there is also a decline so these two are interconnected very nicely now another major problem that we see is people don't even know that kara exists sara exists sa exists and all these things are done under a law so awareness is a big problem and the problem with this is registration huge problem why is because there is a shortage of licensed agencies so the number of agencies which get this work done is very less and we don't know who is the authentic registered guy who can take care of all these things so that's a major major issue so you just can't go to a orphanage and say okay i want to adopt this child you can't do that there is a process so process ke liye you need the persons persons availability is not there because we don't know who is true who is a flawed one again is it a scam are we getting involved in a scam these are the fears that parents have so good people have a problem like this when they want to do good things the system does not allow it allows but not in a smooth way there are people who will come you know lot of lot of hurdles for the adoption process so because of this sc got angry and said chalo we have to get the adoption process done faster so you better you have to revamp everything overhaul everything and make sure that it's in a very beautiful way because the essence of adoption is a very very beautiful thing it is it is the most divine thing which can happen giving life to a child is the best thing that any person on this earth can do so when such a beautiful thing is happening i think the process should also be quick smart and more controlled and regulated so on that basis i just want to end it cara should be governed by a child centric optional enabling as well as gender just sped special adoption law actually this was a mention of one of the parliamentary committees this is a statement of a parliamentary committee so this is what it should be okay it should be a child centric 
it should be an optional thing and it should be enabling as I said which quick and nice and it should be gender just that is very important and there should be a special adoption law exclusively for this so I hope all of you have understood this this is how the process of adoption takes place in our beautiful country so again I repeat registration with carings Sa will coming to picture they will do research about the prospective parent what is a home environment and all these things they will think whether the child is getting a benefit out of uh, this will the child be happy or not and then next the registration goes to Kara. Kara will look on to me for the next two years and then finally the confirmation of being a good parent or not will be decided. So I hope all of you have understood this process of adoption. It's very important especially for social justice as well as social issues, paper one as well as paper two and prelims may they might ask you a question on Kara and you might also add this in essay also. So I hope all of you have got benefited out of this video.